So let's talk about neediness. And why as a man, you need to destroy your neediness. Why neediness could be the very thing that's ruining everything you want in your life. It destroys your ability to flirt with women. It ruins flirting. I mean, it, it takes flirting, it just makes it horrible. It destroys conversations and deep conversations. It destroys long-term relationships. Uh, sometimes guys are strong in the beginning and they become needy later. And the woman's like, this isn't the guy I met. It destroys your relationships with your male friends. Like if you end up on the bottom of the totem pole because you're the most reactive, insecure, needy guy, um, then it can actually uh, destroy a lot of those male relationships. It can ruin your business because it becomes harder to do sales. It becomes harder to have fun in business. It becomes harder to bring value because you're worrying so much about what other people think. And that's where the reactivity comes from. So we're gonna dive into why that is, what you can do about it. And if you stay to the end of the video, I'm gonna do a little physical demonstration of what neediness feels like and what goes on. So you can start to see it literally, not just as a concept, but something you can put into your life right away. Before I do, I wanna invite you to subscribe to the channel. A lot of you haven't subscribed yet. I know you've watched a lot of those videos. So if you're getting a lot of value out of these, this channel and you really wanna participate more in this community, definitely hit that subscribe button. And if you really get value out of this video, like, subscribe, share, all that beautiful stuff. So let's dive right in. What is neediness? Neediness at its core is searching for your sense of validation, like the sense of purpose, the sense of who am I, not even who am I, the sense of am I good enough from other people. So if we were using this in a dating context, you're out on a date, you're trying to flirt with girls, you're constantly subtly with micro expressions, little glances, little feelings. If you're, if you're good at neediness, if you're bad at neediness, neediness, it's obvious. Looking at women to figure out if you're okay, if you're doing good enough. You're worried about what they think of you so much, you're not truly being yourself. And you don't allow yourself to be free. You don't allow yourself to push tension too far unless she gives you permission and seems to like it. You don't allow yourself to take huge risk and that really holds you back. I mean, think about it. I, I, I knew I was good with tension. I could calibrate and I could play with it back in the early days, but I was so needy that I'd come up and I'd hold way back and I'd hold all my tension skills back. I wouldn't push boundaries. I wouldn't tease hard. I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't play with her. I, I wouldn't do any of that stuff until I got approval. But let's say suddenly she gave me a little bit of approval. Like, I like it when you push tension. Oh, permission. Light switch goes on and I start pushing tension. I start stepping into my balls as a man. I start stepping into my courage and I start having fun. Not because I wanted to, but because she validated me. Now, I'm not saying you can't enjoy her validation. That's a beautiful thing. When a woman gives me a look with those beautiful eyes and her, her pupils dilate and she's really enjoying me, I love that. But the question is, do you need it to feel good about yourself? Can you feel good about yourself regardless of that? And so if you're constantly looking to other people, your male friends, women, your relationships, like, like, girls you know you've been in a long-term relationship with for your sense of validation sales clients well you're gonna have a hard time not only progressing those relationships making them better growing them but you're also gonna have a hard time enjoying yourself really being happy so let's look at two forms of neediness that really stand out and let's let's talk about a story around those that that really illustrate them uh, the first one is reactivity in the sense that I am going to look for permission from you for how to be. And to illustrate this, I'm going to tell you a little story. Many years ago, before I ever was a dating coach or even learned anything about this, I was set up on a blind date. And I talked to this girl on the phone for a little bit and I thought, I'm going to impress her. I'm going to win this woman over. I like the way she sounds on the phone. She's got to be hot. She's got to be amazing. You know, I'm going to be the man. And I, I picked this expensive restaurant. I I planned this whole elaborate date, right? And I was super wanting her validation. I was wanting her approval. I wanted to win her over. I wanted to prove I was man enough. And so when we went out on the date, it was really interesting because the moment I saw her, I knew I wasn't attracted to her. She wasn't for me. And you know what? All that neediness went away instantly. All that wanting to impress her went away. Matter of fact, I'm sitting at this expensive restaurant having a meal and I'm like, what am I doing? Why am I spending all this ridiculous amounts of money on a woman I had never even seen and only talked to on the phone once? Matter of fact, I started to beat myself up. I started to feel terrible. And the interesting thing was I stopped worrying about what she thought of me 
And she started to chase me. And the more she chased me, the less I cared, the more she chased me. And it was really interesting to watch this dynamic in action. I was like, usually I'm chasing the women I like, but in this case, this one's chasing me and I just want to get away from her. And that was all because the neediness turned off. And that's the first form of neediness, wanting validation from the other person, trying to figure out who you need to be. Now, in another form of this, you might go out on a date and you might be sitting there and you're constantly looking to your date because you think she's so hot, she's so beautiful, I need her to like me, I need to prove I'm good enough as a man. I need to, I need to feel my masculinity turn on and she's my catalyst. She's not, but that's the kind of the idea behind it. And you look at her and you're like, wow, you know, who do you need me to be? How do you need me to be? Let's say the waiter comes over and he's really rude. And as a man, your job is to deal with that, right? I'm going to create a nice frame for our date so she can be super feminine and flow for me. So she can surrender all her masculine and ooze with femininity, which is going to create polarity and going to create this insane attraction between us, right? That's what she really wants. Because so many women today, especially in the Western society, have to put on so much masculinity. If you come in and you hold a strong frame, a lot of times they can surrender that. And then they want to be super feminine for you, which pays off later, right? So, but instead of doing that, instead of dealing immediately with him being rude, I'm really worried about how she's going to perceive me. Is she going to think I'm rude if I say something? If I don't say something, is she going to think I'm rude? How should I behave? Should I get really angry? Should I just be firm? I don't know. And your mind starts to race and then you look at her for micro expressions. What's she thinking? What's she feeling? Oh, she wants me to say something. Maybe I should say something, but then he's going to get mad at me. And then I'm going to feel stupid in front of all these people because I'm, I'm making a scene and all that reactivity starts to go on. Now, maybe I'm over dramatizing it a bit, but you get the idea. And sometimes we just shut down in the moment because we're overloaded or we overreact. We look at her and we overreact and then we get super reactive. And I'm going to talk about what that is in a minute because that's, that, that's the downside of the neediness. You become reactive. You start to lose your grounding. You lose that sense of, of being lower in your body and you start to come up here into your head. And you try to deal with it from your head, which is really unattractive because a man that's not needy is proactive. And again, I'm going to come back to that in a minute. Now, she looks at you and she's like, this dude is all over the place. He can't handle it. I have to handle it. Or if she's really submissive and shy and feminine, she just won't feel safe. She won't feel secure because she doesn't have a good container. So she can't fully surrender to you, but she can't surrender to herself because she doesn't have a lot of good uh, masculine structure in herself. So she just wants to end the date. It ends up over and you're wondering what the hell just happened? Why did this happen? I've seen this happen with spectacularly handsome guys, really good looking guys. And I've seen average guys, below average guys, get this point when I'm teaching them. And then when they finally get it, suddenly they've got all the dates in the world. It blows my mind. So another form of neediness is overreactive. Like the moment the waiter comes over and starts to be rude, starts to say something rude and, and, and it's unpolite, he jumps all over the, the waiter because he's, now he's heard, you know, don't be, don't be passive, lead, take charge. And so instead of calmly again dropping low in his body feeling his grounding being assertive being powerful he looks at the waiter and just attacks he comes from anger he comes from attack i'm going to prove i'm good enough i'm going to show her i'm good enough i'm going to stop looking to her for validation and in that you're also out of control you're, you're losing control so if we think about you know three basic types of guys you got one guy who's really passive let's, let's look at a primitive village right like a primitive village you got your masculine men that go out and hunt and battle and protect the village and you got your feminine women who are preparing the food healing and nurturing inside that protected space and then you got three types of men within the village one type he's really scared and he's nervous and he's reactive and should I, i'm going to go hunting but I'm, i don't want to get hurt i have to go to the battle whatever it is i have to go out and deal with the tension of the world and that's my job as a man but it scares me so he's always shrinking bottom of the totem pole reactive right the second guy is overreactive he's like let's go do it let's go kill an animal let's do it he's he's trying to prove his worth to the village but the leader the leader the hunting party the lead, party the leader the village the wise ones are the ones that have in a sense, tamed both those animals, those that polarity. And they said, I'm not going to be underreactive. I've let that go. And I'm not going to be overreactive. I'm going to sit in my own power. I'm not going to let the outside world, all the other hunters tell me how to react. I'm going to feel everything from my body, which is what it's designed to do. There's many senses in the body beyond the physical senses. I'm going to let my intuitive sense, my, I'm going to let my subconscious mind take in all this 10 million bits to 15 million bits of data per second. 
And then I'm going to let it feed to my conscious how to handle the situation, not worry so much about what they think. Doesn't mean I don't take in how they're being. Doesn't mean I don't read them. I just don't seek their validation in the final decision. If what they say makes sense, hell yeah, we're going to use it. Good, good job, you know? But in the end, I've got to make a decision. And I'm going to crunch it in my gut brain. I'm going to feel through my whole body. And I'm going to say, this is the direction we're going to find food today. This is what we're going to do. And it feels solid. It's information that's coming from your reticular activating system, that part of you that, that's scanning for what you want, taking in all the information. Because you're non-reactive, you don't need somebody's approval. You can make a powerful decision. And that's a beautiful thing when you think about it. And that's a powerful thing. And you can start to develop that. I've had to do a lot of work to develop that. I've had to do a lot of work to be able to speak on stage and not worry about what people think of me. I've had to do a lot of work to be able to do these YouTube videos and not worry so much about what people think of me. And you can develop that too. I promise you, it's innate in you as a masculine man. Matter of fact, when you stop worrying about what people think of you, a lot of the things you don't enjoy, you're gonna start to enjoy. You're going to start to love building businesses. You're going to start to love stepping into attention more. You're going to start to love setting boundaries with the people in your life, especially the beautiful woman you're dating. And she's going to love it when you set those boundaries and say no to her. Because maybe you don't say no enough. Maybe you're too passive. Maybe she leads you around. And when you start to own yourself, magical things start to happen. Okay? So proactive, reactive, and then I'm going to get into this demo thing I talked about in a minute. But before I do, I want to invite you to share. If you're getting some realizations from this, or if you're what side of the reactivity scale you're on, you know, what percentage? It's usually people are on both sides. They, they bounce around. But if you're needy, where, what type of needy are you? If you got any questions, put it in the comments so we can all learn together. Well, let's talk about reactive first. Reactive means that you're reacting to the external stimuli, you know, and that's more of a feminine submissive woman she's reacting to you she's reacting to the environment she's but she flows with it it's part of being more feminine masculine has to penetrate and do stuff in spite of what they're feeling out here in spite of their emotional relationship to the outside environment so as i feel these crazy things going on out here this woman's looking at me a little angry because i teased her and she didn't like it this guy over here thinks i'm an asshole this guy over here is giving me approval so i should do more of it to, to make because I like his validation or her validation if it's a woman. And I'm reading all this with my subconscious mind because sometimes the most needy guys are the best at reading people's subcommunication because they do it so much for survival. Um, I start to take it all in and try to become like a chameleon who I need to be to make everybody happy. And in that, sometimes I just shut down if I can't make everybody happy as a way of, being, of going into safety, a fight flight mechanism. And it's really stressful, pumps a lot of cortisol, beats the body up. And that's reactivity. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. You, you hear their tones go up. You'll see them start to dart a lot. They'll be like, they'll, they'll hear a voice tone over here that's disapproving and their head goes up like that really quick or their eyes dart over just to read the subcommunication of this person over here. When they say something, they're like, you know, yeah, yeah, I really like that too. And you hear that voice tone. You hear that losing of their groundedness because you feel the energy rise in their body. So notice if in your body, there's times when you feel this sense of a nervous rising and a losing of awareness of the lower body, especially the stomach, heart, stomach, uh, hips, and legs, okay? Because if you get up higher and higher, pretty soon you're, you're almost just a talking head and women really don't find that attractive. Now, what is a proactive man like? The proactive man is real low in his body. He feels his feet on the ground. He feels the earth beneath him. There's a sense like through your feet and through your perineum, through the base of your spine, you can feel two or three feet out of the ground. They've been talking about this for years with chakras and spiritual centers. But if you look at a lot of the modern science, like people like Joe Dispenza, he's really talking about it in a scientific way about how all of this really works. Grounding is really important. Um, it's really real and it's, it's so powerful and it heals so much in the body. And when you feel that earth supporting you beneath you and you feel the weight of the earth and in a sense like the earth, which supplies you oxygen, food, shelter, water supporting you, you feel much stronger. You get a connection to that feminine earth. The earth is more feminine, right? Consciousness, the universe is more masculine. So when you start to feel that ground beneath you and you feel the weight of your body in that ground, you get comfortable and somebody challenges you, you, you you're anchored into the earth like, tr like roots of a tree. You don't rise up and get all nervous. Okay, that's the first one. Next one is, is the hips. The hips is your creative energy, your turn on, your passion. And then the stomach, that's your gut instincts. Like do this, do that. I take in that 10 to 15,000 bits of information and then my stomach goes, 
talk to that girl right now. She's into you. And you just feel it. Like, even if you didn't get the subcommunication, you're like, I don't know, I'm supposed to go over there. I'm going to trust it. And boom, it nails. Or it, she challenges you and then the girl next to her likes you because you handle her so well because the gut brain can read so much more than you can about what's going to happen. And so feeling what we, those first three centers, the gut as a brain, you can look it up as science, the hips, that, that's used in athletics all the time. You gotta balance at the level of hips. That's where athletes perform their best, feeling the weight of your legs and the grounding beneath you. You start to feel rooted in the ground. That's when you start to feel like a man. Then from there, you open your heart. See all the new agey men that don't get women are opening their heart without that lower energy and they're just not attractive. So when you start to open that heart, and you feel that earth beneath you, you feel that flow through your body, then you walk up and a woman challenges you, it just runs right through you like a lightning rod. You're like, yeah. Matter of fact, at that point, as a man, you can begin to say less. See, so many men think they have to do something to create value. But men that really get this, this deep spiritual masculine spirituality, let's call it masculine spirituality, masculine groundedness, masculine connection, grounding of their own heart before they open it, they start to realize that their value is in their penetrating presence, their groundedness, their ability to be a lightning rod for the energy around them. So when a woman gets nervous, she gets anxious, and she goes more into her feminine, and starts to bounce from emotion to emotion, she gets pulled into him because he grounds it all. He creates a safe space for her to be emotional, which she loves. She loves the exploration of emotions. Look at the books they read, the TV shows they watch, look at the drama they love to create. It's the exploration of all these subtle emotions. There's a reason for that in nature, you know? Uh, from being able to read the subtlest uh, emotional response on their babies to their 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 husbands to their their all their loved ones, so they can tap in and, and and help them open deeper and deeper into their soul and open their soul more. That's why they need your masculine protection, so they can do their job of going deep into all these these turbulent emotions to help heal. You know, the feminine is the natural healer. The masculine is is the natural penetrating force that protects and provides, but it can do it almost in stillness it, you can feel it in stillness and then it takes action when it needs to like like the lion the lion king right so that's proactive and reactive you want to learn to be that more proactive guide and uh if you haven't checked out my full body scan meditation it's helped build that awareness it's on youtube just look up full body scan we can put a link in here it's a popular video that i created a while back and i'm going to create a new one but uh because that one i created in a workshop just randomly and had all these noises in the background and and uh, we put it out there. People loved it. Maybe it'll still be more popular than a new professionally created one, but a very popular uh, meditation. So check that out. Now, the demo I talked about. What does it look like when you get nervous? What does it look like when you get reactive? Well, there's a sense your, your energy rises. So if I'm sitting here, let's say I tighten and, and you challenge me, you come at me and go and go, well, that's a, you know, I don't like guys with bald heads. You're too short, whatever. So let's say some girl comes at me really hard, but she smiles at me and gives me that look like I'm fucking with you, you know, like they, they do it sometimes because women love to test the power of a man. Then suddenly I feel my feet tighten up, let's say a little bit because I get nervous. I, I, I'm resisting the ground. I'm getting nervous, just like we do when, in sports and athletics. When we get nervous, we start to tighten. I tighten the hips a bit. I tighten the stomach a bit. And then I pop up here and I'm like, oh yeah, well, you know, um, uh, and then I just can't even think of what to say because I, I went up with my head too far. You could have coined like coined routines, right? Oh yeah, yeah, I got the baldest head in the bar. <laughs> Who cares? It just sounds cheesy because I'm talking all from up here and I'm, I'm making these gestures. But if you stay low in the body and you start to relax down and let all that energy, the kinetic chain ground into the ground and feel the earth beneath you, you stay open, you feel your gut, you feel your heart, they don't open, they don't even respond. And she says stuff like that then you feel more powerful to her. And then you look at her and you go, yeah, so I'm probably the baldest guy in the bar and you like it, you know, and you challenge her more with it. You step into it. If I walk up to a woman and I'm reactive and I'm up here, hey, you know, you're really uh, pretty and I really just wanted to say hi to you. Um, saw you from over there, you could feel that. And that's actually a better version than a guy I saw a while back in New York trying to pick up on these two Asian women. They were giggling and laughing because he was so bad at it. I could see him coming from a mile away and so could they. But you start to learn. So the next piece is I learn to stay solid and I, I walk over and I feel the earth beneath me. I let it run through me. I open my heart. I have my turn on open. I have my heart open. I so I'm feeling these lower centers, full body scan meditation. And I look at her and I'm like, you know, I saw you over there and I just had to come meet you. There's something about you. 
So then she goes, who are you? What do you want? And you go, my name's Brian, what's your name? And you just hold that space and she starts to slowly open because you're staying in this nice grounded solid space. You can break the tension if it becomes too much. Like if you're doing it, it starts to get too much. You can, instead of reactively looking away, you proactively take in something over there, then you come back and look again. And it's a dance. It's an art form of staying loose and fluid in the body and making all the vibrations between you and her dance. You as the masculine modulate those vibrations. Her as the feminine challenges it. Masculine grows through challenge. The feminine grows through expression. And you play and dance off of each other for expression and praise. So as you see that happen, you begin to realize more and more the power of staying solid and not worrying about what the outside world thinks. We used to teach a lot of this stuff in the workshops, five hours, six hours a day with women, just going back and forth with the men, playing with these energies, you know? And it's, it's so amazing to see the difference and then get it on video, the subtlest communication, littlest bits of information going back and forth. And you realize that we are telling people how to treat us moment by moment by moment by moment. And it's happening so fast with micro expressions, we just can't keep up with it all. But as you start to feel good in the body, you start to feel your masculine, you feel your turn on, you feel your heart, you feel your passion for life, everything starts to change in this area. So with that said, I wanna invite you to watch my previous video on you might be rejecting women and not knowing it. And we'll link that in here too. Um, and uh, definitely check out my ebook, The Art of Fearless Seduction. We'll put a link to that in here. Um, and again, put a comment in the video. I definitely want those comments and, and make sure to subscribe. And uh, with that said, and remember, only the confident really live. See you in the next video.